Here is the reason why majority of black women are behind in the dating game, behind in the marital game, they're not getting married, and they cannot secure or they have not been securing men who provide. There is nothing. Glad to have you amazing viewer. It's another exciting time, another educational video, collection of TikTok videos. I must mention that. I came across this video on my For You page on TikTok, and surprisingly, I realized that so many people have reacted to the same. So it's a very relevant topic. There even research that have been conducted on the same. So there's a lot of perspective on it, and most women find it easier uh, to communicate the need of not wanting men into their lives so this shows that some people have given up uh into this uh they have given up on searching and finding that perfect man that man who can provide for the family that man who will be present and not uh push them into um masculinity you know a man who will protect women so uh and most of the time these are messages that you hear in songs so most messages are being passed through songs I'm positive about this music most of their lyrics are talking about using men not needing men getting your own money uh stay to yourself you know that type of stuff and we know that's not a positive message for the same reason black men also complain of the same and when they try to compare black women to other races uh they always find out that black women come out to be those who are independent strong uh they want to be alone they don't want any men into their lives just here's a word to y'all independent women first and foremost you got to understand the direction the definition of independent independent means that you are celebrating the fact that there is nobody with you black women you are celebrating the fact that you don't got a n that you don't have a man that you don't have a father that you don't have a dad that you don't have a husband that you don't have a, some kind of male influence in your life you're celebrating being alone that's why we don't like our independent why would i want to hold and celebrate you not being there then you get mad at us for not being there that's it but what could be the reason to that listen to this lady she's making a lot of sense in what she's saying uh, you might not fully agree with what she's saying listen to this nothing scares me more than the way black women think the way that we process things the way that we handle things the way that we interpret things really scares me because it just shows me how much work we have to do the way that we decide to handle situations the way that we deflect the way that we point the fingers, the way that we just refuse to want to do better, that scares me. Because it makes me look at my society, look, look at society and look at my community and say, this is the problem. Our fight to fight against positivity, the fight to stay in a negative place, the fight to just stay content and keep pointing fingers and keep being a victim instead of trying to overcome our situation. Black women, and I'm only speaking because I'm a black woman, make poor dating decisions. So I agree with everything that she just said down to the T. Now, let me share my personal story with you. I was raised in a dysfunctional family. My mother was a single parent. My daddy was in the picture. But however, I realized something about their relationship. They should have never been together in the first place. And this is a lot of y'all parents, by the way. So when you look at the Maslow's hierarchy, right? As black people, we have always been stuck in those basic needs. The two bottom tiers on that hierarchy. So our psychological needs and our safety needs. This includes food, water, rest, security, and safety. Now that we are becoming an individualistic society and people are realizing that money is not enough, because this is why a lot of people was getting back together back in the day, right? You are paying more attention to emotional intelligence. I think back to the time where I was in college, because I was raised by two people who only really cared about the basic needs. So that's what they taught me right your parents probably taught you only the basic needs because that's all they knew now as an adult you are struggling to figure out the rest of your needs because you probably don't know what those look like so then you begin to get into relationship after relationship after relationship getting your heart broken you have needs but you don't really know how to articulate what those are so you continue to be in this repeated cycle where you're not getting your needs back 
Now that you have the necessary tools to make better dating decisions and not be in situationships, not get caught up with dudes who are not meeting your standards, men as well, because men also need to learn how to vet women properly because you also won't be in the cycle of getting women pregnant and not being able to take care of your child or wanting this baby with somebody who you didn't intend to have a baby with because we're continuously having war with each other when we both should be learning about each other and how we can come together because we both have similar struggles we come from similar backgrounds in most cases and it just wasn't taught to us so this is something that we have to work through on both sides because men are judging women for what they've been through and women are judging men because of how they were raised as well so it's like on both sides there really should be no judgment on each side because we both come from similar backgrounds and who's fueling this the culture is fueling, fueling it the music is fueling it the media is fueling it <laughs> so i think once people want to sit down and have a mature conversation instead of going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth about you doing this and what you're doing for him and what you can do for me and all of this type of stuff that's when we can work through what we got going on because it's not just the men it's the women as well and we have to say look it's both of us like let's just sit down and have a mature conversation and let's both do the work and until we can get to the point where we both say let's do the work instead instead of men um being into a red pill community and talking about black women is this and black women is that and black women talking about black men is this black men is that that's when we can move forward because on both sides neither men or women know how to vet each other here is the reason why majority of black women are behind in the dating game, behind in the marital game, they're not getting married, and they cannot secure or they have not been securing men who provide. And the main reason why is honestly, honestly speaking, it's first societal programming and second, the way that we raise our children, which is why I encourage every black woman that's watching this video even if you made mistakes and you already have children, be the person that breaks the pattern in the family, especially in regards to the selection of men. Let's be honest, women who are of other cultures as white women, um, Middle Eastern women, Asian women, they are taught to target and date and pursue men who are providers, someone or a man who has something to offer. Because in those cultures, when the father gives their daughter away to that man, they don't have the expectation in their mind that their daughter is going to have to struggle, work hard, work double shifts. They feel like we're giving our precious flower away to you. Here she is. Make sure you take good care of her and make, make sure you're able to provide for her. But in the black community, we're taught different. We're taught to date someone just because you like them. Oh, he's not working. It's okay, girl. Like, girl, hold him down. Hold him down. Um, he doesn't have much going on. Hold him down. Just, 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 just work it out. Um, stick it out. We're kind of taught that struggle narrative, that narrative of of hard work and hard labor, and and we're taught. But why would you be doing hard labor if you have a man present? that you are in a relationship with. That's the difference. And there was a point in time I was working in a luxury firm. Um, it was predominantly, this luxury firm was predominantly a Caucasian luxury firm. And you know, we would have girl talk, like all the associates, like it was really chill vibes. We would all like sit down in the lunchroom and just talk about like girl stuff. Everyone's dating someone new, you know, catch it up. And I noticed that the Caucasian women in there and the Middle Eastern women in there and even the Latin women in there, their first question when anyone in our group was dating a man, their first question was, okay, what does he do for a living? That was always the first question. It wasn't, do you like him? Do you love him? Does he treat you nicely? No, it was, that was never the first question. And as I grew up and I matured 
it totally dawned on me. And I'm like, no wonder they are so far economically with marriages and with relationships because they're the first thing that they look at is financial security. Black women, on the other hand, that is not the first thing that they look at unless they're from African cultures. African women are, you know, African women are totally different when it comes to American women as far as how they date. That man has to be, if they're going to check bank statements <laughs> before the marriage is even legalized, they're going to check bank statements. That's how it is in Africa. So props to African women. They have that on lock as far as um, black women. But it dawned on me and I'm like, this is the problem. Like this is this is it right here. Why are African American women not vetting men properly? Why aren't they choosing men who are educated? Why are they not looking for men who have something to offer? Why are they looking for men that they have to work with or slave with? Majority of the African American women that I know that are highly educated, hyper educated, they take care of their husbands. Their husbands are house husbands. So I want to talk to parents, in particular parents of of black daughters who are teenagers who do not allow your daughters to date or even acknowledge that they are interested in the opposite sex when they're 16, 17, 18, 14, 10, when they start to notice, which biologically, which like, it's just nature that they're going to start noticing the opposite sex because that's what we do as humans, as animals. So I want to share with you guys what I'm observing right now. So I am a cheer sponsor and I'm also an elementary school teacher. But I'm a cheerleading coach for a high school, a very popular high school. And we are waiting for our football game to start. There's another team that's playing on the field before us. So I know a lot of these kids, there's probably about 3,000 teenagers that are out here. And just through my works of working with young ladies and girls, some of these little girls I've had, or some of these teenagers I had as little girls, as cheerleaders and in other programs, and the ones whose parents are working the hardest to raise them to be nice, upstanding, honorable young ladies, let me tell you what I'm seeing. So the pattern that I'm seeing is, is the girls with the very strict parents, the ones who don't want, want their daughters to keep their nose in the books and don't be looking at them boys. And we know that we do that as black parents and black people because we know the legacy of low achievement that there is for men in our community. And so we know and we have been dragged as black women dating black men black men know they have dragged so these black fathers they know how dirty and low down that they have been to girls that they say oh i would never let my daughter date but not thinking of the fact that you need to help your daughter find someone to date and you need to mentor other young men so that your daughter will have someone to grow up to date so what we see in turn is the girls out here and i've seen and i counted them i saw 17 girls that are parents, real strict parents some of them are cheerleaders not on my squad but they're just here at this event. But the nicest girls, the ones whose parents are keeping them sheltered, I should say the most sheltered girls, that's what I'll say. They are around corners, petting on, rubbing on boys, uh, boys reaching off into their clothes and their skirts. And the girls whose parents allow them to have a boyfriend, guess what? They're dating nice boys, the nice boys, the, the quarterback of the football team whose uh, dad is a doctor and the mom is a minister. The president of the debate team who already has a scholarship to Harvard already in the first semester of his senior year. Those are the boys that the girls whose parents allow them to date. Because let me tell you what, when you don't allow your daughter to date and she has to sneak around, sneak around behind your back, because I can guarantee she got a boyfriend. My parents were the strictest. Oh my God, they were strict. My mother didn't work. And like, I, I couldn't even go out the house. Like girls can go out and they have a curfew. I didn't have that. I, all I did was stay at home. And if I went to a football game to be a cheerleader, my mom and dad were sitting right there watching me to make sure, I guess, that no black male wolf would get me and attack me. Now, of course, they waited until I got 18 and then sent me off with a 26-year-old predator to date, but we won't even go there because I've talked about it before. So the girls whose parents allow them to admit that they are human and that they are attracted to the opposite sex, which they're going to expect them to by the time they get 21, they're going to expect them to know everything about being a woman and to go and find a nice young man. The nice young men are already dating young ladies whose parents are allowing them to date. So I'm seeing the president of the debate team sitting there with a the little girlfriend that's one of the little cheerleaders 
holding her hand and talking to her and you know we're like hey you guys get away from each other kind of playing with them I'm looking at the little quarterback of the football team he's over there talking to a little girl that's on the dance team and the girls that are sheltered like I said they are around corners with the police and everybody running them off just looking like complete I mean I won't say the word because we know how TikTok censor black women but you turn your daughters into sluts. You do. You turn them into that because they have to sneak behind your back in order to be human. If you look at any type of medical journal, any type of studies, they're supposed to be attracted to the opposite sex. And by you saying, keep your hands in the books and what you're going to beat them and make them not... If that's the case, you could beat your daughter and she wouldn't have her cycle. If you don't want your daughter to have a period, you can beat her. That is the same premise of beating your daughter because she likes a boy or is interested in a boy. And it's not that you care about her being interested in a boy. You just know what the little black boy is probably going to do to her. But the nice, honorable little black boys, they come to your house and knock on your door and say, Sir, can I date your daughter? The ones that's walking around with their pants hanging off, the ones that ain't playing football, that's not a part, that's not in a band, that's not doing anything, let me tell you what they're doing. They're around there with your shelter daughters reaching. Okay, so this is really sweet. So while I'm talking to you, and I wish I had kept this recording because one of my little girls that's a part of the Spirit Squad came over and said, um, my boyfriend's mom is at the gate, and can I go over and say, say hi to her? Of course she can. But the little shelter girls, the one whose dad is a minister of the mega church around here, his daughter's over there, was over there, doing everything might as well have been on a street corner. You turn your daughters in the hose when you try to keep them from their natural tendencies as a human to be attracted to the opposite sex. So that's all I have to say, and I wish that we would stop doing that and shaming little black girls for being human. I talk about this all the time because everything she said in that video, I agree with. The little girls who have to go around sneaking around, they getting snuck. And y'all know exactly what I mean. You know, and then when they get older, like a lot of y'all grown women now have friends, female friends who can never find a man or are always single. Or, you know what I'm saying? Or it's, it's, they're always meeting the bad one or the not the right one. And that's because once they finally enter whatever age their parents feel like they're old enough to date, which is usually after they're technically adults anyway, they don't know how to have healthy interactions with men, with respectful men. They don't know how to be courted because they used to being sneaking around or being, you know, felt on or whatever else, as opposed to little girls who had the boy who came to the house and asked permission to take her to the dance or take her to the movies or the football game or whatever. You know, those little girls grow up and understand what courtship and what being dated really means. Whereas the girls who had to sneak around now, you know, they're in their older 20. I mean, um, early 20s even they're grown women now and within two to three weeks they trying to have sex and y'all really don't get that within a couple of months of knowing somebody and I don't care what nobody say if you're really trying to be courted and trying to have a courtship and trying to date somebody even within the first few months no y'all should not be having sex that's why the women who get it get it and those who don't look stupid and end up single and 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 a lot of times this is how i'm not even gonna get into the whole other thing but this is how y'all end up you know with a collection of children even by other people it's about healthy relationships and it starts really early if you never know and understand your worth and this is part of young ladies understanding their worth being courted when they're allowed to be courted they understand their worth and they understand how people are supposed to come at them um but it's just crazy at how a lot of people really don't get it. They don't understand it. So a lot of y'all who are not going to agree with this video, I know y'all going to be on here arguing with yourselves. Have at it. But it's the truth. The girls who have to sneak around typically don't have meaningful relationships with men later on in life until it takes something to teach her or someone. But they, they just don't get it. They do not get it at all whereas the ones who are allowed to be courted they understand what it means to have a courtship even if they, they they understand it's okay to date multiple people at the same time as well because they're being courted and then they they understand how to have those lasting and meaningful relationships when it's time the girls who have to sneak literally it's a pattern look at your friends and look at your single friends who are single and happily dating or in a relationship versus the ones who just never can find the right man and ask them if their parents were strict i bet you i bet you man i could put money on it the ones who had the strict parents are the ones who ain't gonna they literally have no luck in dating and this is why why is it hard for black women to find rich men to marry them because rich men whether they're black white asian latino 
um, whatever. Rich men like certain types of women. Okay. And if you don't fit into that category, they're not going to want to marry you. Now, the, the trick is to get into the category. Get into the category. Look at all the rich men and look at their wives. What do they all have in common? Besides, you know, being pretty, what else do they have in common? But we work at the same place. Don't date, don't date where you work unless you're dating a boss and you plan to quit and have him support you. <laughs> and then, okay, first and foremost, uh, Melania Trump did not come from wealth. So that has nothing to do with it. You're not coming from, they're classy. Yes. Um, what else? They're not loud and obnoxious. They keep it, they shed it up. They don't outshine their husband. That's for damn sure. They don't outshine. And even Michelle had to, even Michelle and Michelle Obama had to hold back. She had to keep it together. Cause you know, she was like, okay, I'm in public. I'm in the public. I can't, I can't really, there was a few times she slipped up and looked at him crazy. <laughs> But you gotta you gotta keep it together in public, especially. <laughs> Very dis different perspective to this, and what I can say is, yes, parents have a role to play, uh, but also, and they have really to play their card well because uh, this thing is making a lot of sense and based on evidence. And uh, you see, she's an educator, and children are there as she speaks, uh, and she's observing them, and I love that about teachers. You're, you're not just teachers, but also you are there to instill values in those children and i love what that lady is doing it's just amazing i love her work but also let's look at another perspective as we are grown like black american women who are grown right now how can we undo the things that we had already learned uh, from our childhood i know there are things that are also enculturated in us there are things that can't go uh, so fast but are we open to change do we know that what we are doing is wrong first at the first place uh or why are we keeping on feeding on the idea of not wanting men uh, we just want to live our lives alone. Not to watch this extent. This has been a long video, but I appreciate your love and support. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, comment, like the video, kindly like the video. I love interacting. Uh, share your thoughts, but also share the video and let's help people. Goodbye for now. I appreciate.